Hey everybody, it's Courtney, and I'm back here with another video for Simon Hurley Create. Today we're gonna to be using some of the new products from his Christmas in July release. We're using the Tree Farm background stamp, the Swirly Ferns background stamp, Sweater Weather stencil, and just the sentiments from the Posh Poinsettias. So we're gonna create our backgrounds first with the Simon Hurley Create inks. So we're making three tone on tone, very simple cards today. So I'm starting off with a piece of the stark white cardstock. This is also by Simon Hurley. And I am using the Later Gator and Over Zealous inks, which are previously released. So I'm starting with the Later Gator, which is just a little bit darker than the other. And I'm mainly just concentrating on the outer edges. Now I'm using a blending brush here. These inks work really good with the traditional ink blending tool as well. And I'm going in with a pretty light hand. I just gradually build up the color. I find with dye inks, that's the easiest way to do it to get more of a seamless blend. But Quite honestly, most of this background is gonna be covered up anyway with a background stamp, so the ink blending doesn't need to be perfect. So I kind of just evened it out a little bit, making sure that each side was kind of the same color <laughs> as the other. And then I'll go in the center with the overzealous, which like I said, is just a little bit lighter. And I'm just gonna kind of blend that out a little bit. It's not gonna be too noticeable of a difference because they are, very similar. Um, well, they're not really similar when you stamp with them, but because I'm going in with such a light hand, I'm not really going too dark with the darkest color, if that makes sense. But I am going to darken up the edges just a little bit. So I'm going to go back to that later gator and just darken up the edges a little bit more um, to get just a little bit more of a contrast. But like I said, you can see that I do not have a perfect blend on this whatsoever, and it really won't matter in the and depending on what background stamp or stencil you end up using. So this is a slower drying dye ink, which is why it's good for blending. So I am going to put this aside to dry for a little bit and work on the next background, which I'm gonna use these same greens, but I'm also going to bring in one of the new colors and this is called Fake Plant. And I'm just gonna do some basic ink blending here. And pretty much just going stripes vertically, uh, or no, vertically, not vertically, horizontally <laughs> across the card panel. So I'm going to start off with that fake plant, which is obviously quite darker than the other two, but I am going in with a pretty light hand. That way I can get my colors to blend. So once I have a little bit of that down, I'm going to go in with the later gator and go right underneath that. And you'll see that I'm going to go back to that fake plant just to make sure that these two blend nicely. Then below the later gator, I'll go in with the overzealous, and then you'll see that I'll go right back to that later gator to make sure that those two blend nicely together. And you can see that you get a really nice gradient with these three greens. I really like the way these greens really blend well together. So I'm just gonna do the same thing, going all the way down the card panel. And once again, this will take a little bit of time to dry, so you wanna make sure that you put this aside. So finally, we'll move on to the third panel. And this time, I'm not gonna do anything special at all. I am just gonna go in with the rosy cheeks. And I'm starting off with a really light hand because I just wanna show you what a difference you can get with one ink. So you can see that I have a really pale pink, but once I add a little bit more ink and go in with a little bit heavier of a hand, it turns into a dark pink. So with one ink pad, you can get different gradients of that same color with these inks. That's what I really, really love about these. So I went ahead and filled in this entire panel. Didn't do any blending with any other color, just left it with this just one color. Again, put this aside to dry. Next, we're gonna work on the rest of our backgrounds. So I'm gonna bring in this first one here and I'm bringing in the Tree Farm background stamp. Gonna squirt a little bit of Tombow Mono Multi Glue on the back of my panel, smear that around with my finger and let that dry. And that way it becomes repositionable. It won't move around in my Misty because I'll pro I'm, no, I know I'm gonna wanna stamp the background stamp more than once. So this background stamp is like many of the other Simon Hurley background stamps. As you can see that there's little pieces that kind of separate from the rest of the stamp. So you can use this as one giant background or you can use individual pieces. So I'm starting off with the fake plant and you can see that I'm just inking around all four edges of the background stamp. 
then I can stamp that down. Now I did stamp this twice just because I really wanted a really bold, especially around the edges, really bold. And it's a huge stamp. <laughs> so usually with background stamps, I find myself stamping them twice anyway, just to make sure. And I got a pretty good impression, but I like to just make sure that it's really crisp. So once that was down, you can see that the center is still just nothing. I'm gonna clean off my stamp and I'm gonna bring in that later gator, which is that medium green. And I'm just gonna ink up the center portion of the stamp and then stamp that down. So we have a little bit of a gradient with the ink blending and then we have a little bit of a gradient with the stamping itself. So again, put that aside and we'll make this into a card in just a minute. So moving on to the panel that we use the uh, rosy cheeks on. So I'm gonna bring in the Sweater Weather stencil. Two different ways that you can use this stencil. You can use it just as is, or you can use it as a layering stencil. You only need one and you can layer with it. So I'm going to use some post-it note tape to tape this down and I'm bringing in the Bee Sting ink. And this is a red, obviously. And I'm just going to do the ink blending over the entire stencil, not doing any shading or anything like that. But you will want to make sure that once you do the first layer, if you're using this as a layering stamp, you just want to wipe off your stencil before going in with your next color. It won't just because you're going to move that color back onto your panel in places that you don't necessarily want it to go. You don't have to do a full cleaning of it. <laughs> you just want to make sure that you wipe off a majority of that ink. So next I'm going to line it up the way I had it. So you'll be able to see your ink right through it. Then I'm going to shift it up and shift it off to the side. And all I'm doing is making sure that it's even with all of these little designs I guess you could call them just make sure they're even it doesn't have to be perfect but as long as it's even so next I'm going to go in and with another one of the new colors this is called game over and this is like a brick dark brick red and I'm just going to do the same thing no shading here but you can see the bottom portion of my panel is not covered with the stencil easy fix I'm going to remove my stencil line it up line the top portion up with what I've already ink blended because this is a seamless pattern and the rest will kind of just fall into place so I can finish up the bottom portion. You can see that we get a really cool design and this doesn't have to be just for Christmas or winter. You could use this all year round. So next moving on to the third and final background and this time we are going to be using the swirly ferns background stamp. So I did the same thing with the Tombow Mono Multi Glue. Let that dry so that it is repositionable but still sticky on my Misty. Lined up the background stamp and this is another one that has those little cut apart pieces if you choose but I'm going to use it just as a regular background and I'm going to treat my panel with my anti-static tool. Now I had this panel dry for about an hour. Um, you want to make sure that it is completely dry before you move on to this step. This time I am inking this up, the entire thing up with that fake plant, which is that dark, dark green. And again, I did stamp this twice just to make sure that I really got a good impression because we're going to be doing heat embossing. So as you can see, these inks are really versatile. You can ink blend with them. You can stamp with them. You can heat emboss with them. So they do stay wet long enough so that you can use embossing powder with them. And I'm going to just use clear embossing powder. This is the Fine Detail Embossing Powder by Ranger. And I'm just going to sprinkle that over the entire thing. This is the reason why you want your panel to be completely dry with that ink blended background. Because if it's not, this embossing powder is going to stick to the ink blending rather than the images from the background stamp itself. So do make sure that your heat gun is heated up for about 30 seconds or so before bringing it to the paper. This is the entire panel we're heating up and to minimize the amount of warping that we get, having your heat gun heated up before actually bringing that to the paper will help with that. It will minimize it. So once the embossing is complete, I did let this cool down for maybe 30 seconds or so. You don't want to go right in and do anything with it because you can actually smear the embossed areas if it is still hot. But I, like I said, this is going to be tone on tone. So I don't want to take away any color, but I want to make these little ferns stand out a little bit more. So I'm going to use water. 
I'm going to use a paintbrush and some water and I'm just gonna paint the insides of the little ferns here. I let the water sit for maybe about 20 seconds or so and then just take a paper towel and dab it up. Now it's not going to completely remove the color, which I don't want it to. It's going to change it a little bit so that I have even more greens going throughout here and just make the ferns stand out a little bit more. It's a little hard to see on camera, but in person you can really tell. Now you can also do this with a shimmer pen and not only will it change the color of the inside of these ferns, but it will also leave behind a little bit of shimmer. I didn't want to waste my shimmer pen because it's kind of running low. <laughs> so I just use plain water. Now this is the stark white cardstock. So it does take a lot of moisture, a lot more moisture than most cardstocks do. It's not a watercolor paper, so you can't douse it with water, but it can certainly take a lot more moisture than any regular cardstock does. So a technique like this is perfectly fine. So I did that with the entire panel, all of the little ferns, and once it's done, you can kind of see that they stand out a little bit more, but in person, you can really tell. So again, I put this aside, let this dry, and now we're going to assemble our very, very simple, simple cards. <laughs> so we're going to go back to this Christmas tree one here, and I am going to trim all four sides down. And when I do my ink blending, my edges seem to get a little bit darker, and I'm sure that's true for most people. So I'm going to just trim off the edges just so that I don't have those really harsh lines on all four sides. And I'm not going to mat this or anything. This one's going to be super simple. I'm going to take one of the sentiments from the Posh Point Setta stamp set and I am treating a piece of white cardstock with my anti-static tool, stamping this with my very, very dirty Versamark ink pad and sprinkling on some more of that clear embossing powder and then I can heat set that. Again, making sure that my heat gun is heated up doesn't really matter too much with a sentiment like this because it's not a huge area, but it is still helpful. Once that embossing powder is cooled down, again, give it about 20 seconds or so, I'm going to go in with that fake plant ink again, and I'm just doing some ink blending directly over my sentiment. That way it'll look like I white heat embossed on a piece of green cardstock, but I didn't because <laughs> I hardly ever buy colored cardstock. I don't really feel the need to when I can get something that perfectly matches my card just by using my inks or my markers. So once that was done, I wiped off the embossed area with just a paper towel to get off the ink that may be sitting on top of it and trim that down into a sentiment strip going to mat this onto a piece of white. So I'm gonna just glue this down to my scrap piece of white here, just leaving a small border on the left-hand side and bottom. And then I can just use that as a guide to trim off the rest. And that way I roughly have the same border and I don't even have to bother to measure. <laughs> so I'm going to adhere my panel down onto a white A2 size card base. Again, using my Tombow Mono Multi Glue, so I'm gonna adhere this flat and then use some foam tape to pop up my little sentiment strip and that's it for this one very 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 simple for the next one we are bringing in this other green panel here and I'm going to take a piece of white cardstock and I was going to do some ink blending on both sides but I decided I just didn't want to ink blend anymore so I'm just going to swipe my ink pad on both sides I'm basically just creating a border again this is going to make it look as if I'm using green cardstock that matches my card but I'm not. <laughs> so I took my panel, my actual card panel, and I just trimmed a quarter of an inch off of each side. You can trim a half an inch off of one side, but again, I don't really like those harsh edges. So I just take a little bit off of both sides. Now for my sentiment, I'm taking another one of the sentiments from the Posh Poinsettia stamp set. And this time I'm just going to stamp it right onto some white cardstock with the, um, fake plant ink again. And these inks stamp really, really well. So I trimmed that down into a small strip and then adhered everything together. First adhering the little swipey stripes down to my card panel, then my main card panel on top of that. So I have a little bit of border on both sides and then popped up my sentiment strip in the center. Finally, we have the red panel that is our final card, and I am going to stamp out my sentiment with the bee sting ink onto some white cardstock and then do a little bit and a little bit of the uh, game over ink on the other side of this white because this will be my mat. Again, not using colored cardstock, I want everything to match 
perfectly without digging through my stash. So I went ahead and trimmed down my sentiment into a small strip and I did the same as I did for the first card. So I'm just going to glue this on top of the ink blended area and then trim it down just leaving a little bit of a border on all four sides. For the card panel itself, I'm just going to take a chunk off of it. <laughs> no measuring, no nothing. I'm just going to kind of line this up into my trimmer here and I did take my sentiment strip which I ended up losing after this by the way just to make sure it looked good and then trimmed off a chunk of it line that up onto my card base had to stop the video rewatch it to figure out where I put the sentiment strip still couldn't find it for about 15 minutes but finally located it and popped that up with some foam tape in the lower right hand corner so that is it that is the final card very simple tone on tone Christmas cards, Christmas in July cards, I should say. So here's a quick look at all three. As always, I will leave the supplies listed in the description box below. Thanks so much for stopping by today and have a great day. Bye.